Uncowed is a comedy film with a serious purpose of helping people stand up to bullies. What do you not want in your water? Uh, we beasties and twigs. What else? Um. Look, think about all the ads in the telly. What does everyone get hung up about? Their looks. Exactly, calories. Everyone wants to look good. So here's what we'll do. Doug Shaw used to be a top level international assassin. Now retired on the Isle of Arran, he lives quietly in luxury. Um, you're a stand in double and you own the Austin Healy, is that right? That's right. Now, how long have you had the Austin Healy? I've had it for 10 years. And how do you like it? It's brilliant. It's brilliant. We we'll go everywhere in it. But this summer must have been fantastic for you. This summer's been great. The roof's not been on all summer. <laughs> fantastic. Out of the blue, his son, Barry, a high flyer in the world of finance, is arrested for misappropriation of funds and incarcerated. It's going pretty well. Are you getting bullied? No, oh, aye. It's a shame. <laughs> they can come up. They can come in this side. That Chris Atkins. <laughs> when he moved to secondary school, our grandson was bullied. In his case, it was because of being a dancer. But kids get bullied for all sorts of silly reasons. Anyway, in the process of helping him, we realised this is a common problem, and applicable to adults in the workplace too. So we thought it would be a good idea to embed helpful advice in a comedy film to empower people without talking down to them. Action! Our hapless heroes, Scott and Fraser, are always trying to find an easy way of making money, but seldom think their schemes through. Here we find them bottling Aaron water, now all they need is a marketing plan. Never, never before have I been so distressed to see sun. <laughs> Fancy buying a little bit of Aaron? Scott and Fraser hope so, because they're ready to sell you a plot. Yeah, that's funny. We are privileged to live on an exceptionally beautiful Scottish island, which provides wonderful backdrops at every location. And here we have more than our fair share of talented cast members, all prepared to devote weeks of their time to the production. Our retired assassin lives in splendid isolation. Finding the right location was critical, and in the end, it was our island estate agents who were able to recommend the perfect property. The owners very generously gave us free reign of their home, which they vacated for the day we were filming there. The part we're doing today was showing Doug um, the pictures for our website, and um, he was wanting some help in return to look after his grandson, Andy. Uh, absolutely beautiful house. Thank you. What's it like to live here? Yeah, it's a lovely place to live. <laughs> it's a lovely place to live. It's, uh, I keep believing it will. The danger will be uh, becoming complacent about it. Chris, yeah. have, have we shown the Oh, sorry, the pickups on the photos. You're quite right. Well spotted. Oh, I've got some great team workers here. <laughs> I think we've been doing really well. It's a good day today, good day yesterday, good day today. So, if it carries on like this, we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. We want our film to empower anyone at risk of being bullied, whether young or older, and wherever they live. So we intend to distribute Uncowed online, free of charge. We hope the comedy will appeal to all ages and cultures. Hello, Mr Shaw. Hello, lads. How are you getting on with your water? Did you get the new labels? Oh, yeah, <laughs> thanks. They're brilliant. So, Lewis, what are you doing this morning, sorry? I'm going to be dancing on jetty, and I'm going to have... I'm going to be teaching... Andy and James, a little bit of choreography for them to mess up and hit each other and should be good fun. Just hoping that I won't break my ankle and some of the cracks in the ground. Oh. Yeah, it's crazy, but it'll work. Andy is a dancer, so had to give a credible performance throughout the film. Fortunately, our choreographer, Fiona Rodriguez, was always on hand to keep him in step. Here Andy encounters Scott and Fraser, who play a key role in empowering him to stand up for himself. Oh yeah, fantastic. You can see he's had a, a wide range of experience in um, 
he's got his theatre, he's got his dance, he's got his acting, picked up like that. Um, so we basically just did a FaceTime, some choreography uh, through the powers of social media, and this is us getting together now. When you plan to snatch a child in the woods, it's always a good idea to alert the police. We didn't want to spark an incident, had a member of the public misinterpreted what they I'd saw. In the interests of comedy, not everything you see should be tried at home. We're taking lots of liberties, but hopefully the important messages will hit home. It's not only individuals who are bullied, Scotland is currently being treated appallingly by the UK government, with little regard for devolution or the will of our nation. So without taking sides or getting too serious, we wanted to poke a little fun at the establishment. Uh, Sir Gilbert Toffee Royal, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of yeah, Dirty Tricks. So, so uh, and what, what kind of things will you, will you be doing then? Are you actually killing him there or are you just oh, man in the background? You might think so, I couldn't possibly comment. <coughs> our film opens with a meeting in Whitehall between our baddie, MI5 Clive, and Sir Gilbert Toffee Royal, a Westminster oh, government on. permanent secretary. <laughs> this is us setting up um, a little bit of skullduggery, actually, just to get rid of the Scottish question. Good evening, sir. Clive, how was your journey down to London? Bloody uncomfortable, thank you. You said it was urgent. Mm, it is. And, uh, Yes, thank you. Clive. Kilmickle Country House provided a convincing setting, perhaps because our Knight of the Realm really does live there. We had to include a scene or two at the Ormondale Hotel, one of Aaron's favourite pubs. Can we get you anything? No thanks, either. This man, Clive, is extremely dangerous. For your own safety, you should disguise yourselves a bit. That way, if he sees you later, he won't recognise you. Clive is not a man to leave loose ends. Oh, the canny of you guys were loose ends. I've got a room full of costumes upstairs for the drama club. Come with me. Ah, of course. Thanks, Isla. I'm sure you'll be able to alter their appearance enough to keep them safe. Here, Scott and Fraser are able to disguise themselves so as not to be identified by MI5 Clive. Of course, they completely overdo it. So tell, tell me, Ella, um, on the day we filmed you do, doing The Barmaid and you were absolutely spot on, how did you feel about that? Oh, how did I feel about it? I felt really good about it. I was unwell, yeah, so I was you. struggling, yes. but everybody around me was just so supportive and helpful that I just felt, I felt at home, I felt safe, I, you know, and it was, I enjoyed it. As soon as it was finished, yes. I felt unwell again oh, and just right? had to go oh, home, sure. but, you. Um, but it was great. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Every retired assassin needs his toys. Ours is lucky to drive a 1959 Austin Healey, which looks and sounds magnificent. In our story, it was necessary to run this off the road very carefully. What the hell do you think you're playing at, Clive? I've got my grandson in the car. My masters won't take no for an answer. No, I'm fine, thanks, Bob. It's a deal because I feel natural to have farm. Oh, I've, I've, I've been farming for about two hours now. I think I'm well versed. I think I could do this as a, a living. <laughs> well, maybe not. It's a bit smelly. Oh, Mr. McDonald! <laughs> the shot here, the car, the runaway car, comes through the barn door into the hay. He explodes. Second shot, second changing. We throw straw, chicken. X-Mark out, 
So far, that's the plan. We just don't know. And I've got to get my wee joke in again. <coughs> We're shooting me. Oh, no. Pigs. I'm going to get dogs soon. Who's doing sound today? <laughs> Good luck. Right. Uh, so we're working with pigs and chickens and dogs. Talking dogs. Right, so for breakfast I had bacon and egg. I've just ate the cast. I apologise. Thank you. Again. We've collaborated on hundreds of projects all over the world, going back to 1981. So we each know how the others think. This makes communication easy and quick. Although it's been 20 years since we last worked together, we immediately clicked again, as if it was yesterday. You don't? What? Uh... We did! Can, can you see that business, Richard? Can you, can you see him taking his pulse? No. No. Am I okay here? Yes, if you're coming, come quickly. Yeah, move about. I can't see Are the um, dogs in the back room going to be an no. issue? So tell me, how did your pig moment go? Um, yeah, it was okay, I think. Um, there was two takes of it, and I was slightly worried that I would have to have more that's takes because the pig yeah, only took two me. takes. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, if the pig's a better actor than me, then I need to slightly right. worry. <laughs> you, she's encountered you. I don't know quite. You, how quickly can you get that window down? Quite quickly? Yeah. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. Yeah. The window's down at this point, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're sitting in. You've had the encounter with Val. You've looked over your shoulder. Cow. You've looked back and you've gone, oh my goodness, and you've done an emergency stop. And this is the shot we cut to. Filmmakers are advised never to work with children or animals. We did both and didn't regret it. Bertie the pig and four hens performed perfectly in one take. Uh, have you learned much in the last week or so? Oh yeah, definitely. I've, um, it's the biggest thing I've worked on. Um, I've been learning loads. It's great to see what a set environment is like. Um, I've been doing a lot of camera operating, some boom making, and then just helping out wherever I can. I have to tell you folks that the shots from yesterday are superb. Everything worked. We've got a good take on everything in spite of all the difficulties. It all just comes together really well. Tell me, Sheila, what is your part in this? I play myself. Well, oh. an exaggerated version of myself. Because I hope I don't go around saying things like, don't you know who I am? But I do in this, so yeah, an exaggerated version of myself. And uh, so well, yeah, here you're going to Standing Stones today? Yes, we're going to the Standing Stones today. I'm going to be tied up with Andy to Standing Stones. I end up getting, just by pure accident, getting taken hostage along with Andy. And uh, we get tied to the Standing Stones together. Will we ever escape? Tune in soon for the next instalment. Karen, cue the guys. Right, come on, let's get this over with. The sooner the better, blah. Over with what exactly? <laughs> <laughs> now obviously you're playing an assassin, how is that? Um, well, I wouldn't say I was typecast, I think it's been uh, <laughs> an odd choice, but um, as long as I can, obviously uh, I assassinated from a distance. All right. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a shooter. I'm not a Jason Statham that can kill with a spoon, you know, close up. <laughs> No, it's definitely, I'm definitely a long distance, <laughs> well out the way. <laughs> so you must have got some funny looks coming along that path, dressed as a pantomime dame. I really enjoyed it. I was offended lots of times by people's reactions to me. But I never went to the co-op. I didn't have confidence for that. I wanted to. I did wave at lots of people as I drove uh, through Aaron. So I'm looking forward to uh, Facebook tonight, my wife's Facebook. Most films build towards a peak. Ours plays out on Macri Moor, the site of the 4,000-year-old Standing Stones, where we stage an homage to Sergi Leone's epic spaghetti western, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. I play an exaggerated version of myself. I was used to be the tourist officer on the island, and I retired back in the beginning of this century. But according to my character, I still love the limelight and I love telling people about the standing stones and the magnificent energy that comes from them. Is that a tea? Yeah, tea, I. Stories set on islands often involve a ferry crossing. We begin and end our tale on the ferry, where we see the difference it can make when a bully recognises the strengths of those they pick upon. Tell me, Natasha, 
How did you get into this role of being a bully? You look nothing like a bully. I was talking to Chris and he thought I'd be good for a role because I'm the same age, well, more or less the same age as Lewis and I didn't mind playing it, so. Only stupid boys dance. We're seeing your daughter today. That's correct, yes, Natasha. Natasha, like yeah. as, as a bully? She is the bully, I know. It's not like her at all. I was going to say, what would you make of that? <laughs> it's definitely against her character, but she seemed to fit in quite well with it, which is quite scarily. But uh, <laughs> she, yeah, she did very well, she loves it. As a truly independent production, with little likelihood of any commercial distribution, our funding options were limited to crowdfunding and sponsorship. Our local co-op, Nyland's top hotel, The Douglas, were quick to sign up to the project, which has been a huge help. Our crowdfunding attracted contributions from a dozen individuals and we're funding the rest ourselves. It's been really humbling that so many people have insisted on working for nothing or significantly reduced fees. This really is a labour of love. Marvin! Have you seen a black car go by recently? No, I can't say I have, but then I'm colourblind. Marvin Elliott's distinctive wood carvings ship all over the world. Very generously, he agreed to appear in our film. Less, less fine things to snap yeah, off. Yeah, a lot more leeway as well, you know, you can yeah. gradually work at it. And you do the small pieces here, or do you do those up yeah, there? Yeah. All done in the workshop. Yeah. And this, um, they're all, most of all, all these are commissioned. Yeah. So. Whatever you do, don't knock my head off until we tell you, all right? Okay. What, but, but we need you to mime it as though you are doing it. We'll get set up. We'll see how we get on. Okay. I have, but they won't take no for an answer. They'll do anything to get their way. You know, they've already locked up my son Barry on some trumped up charge. And when that didn't work, they grabbed his son Andy. Oh! <laughs> but what you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you caught that in good time, Stuart. I did. <laughs> well, we'll never get one as good as that. That was. <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> this is your daughter in your spare time as well, Rich. Oh yeah, I can, I can pretty much do everything because I don't spend much time doing this so sometimes I'm doing general GP Thomas, practice, sometimes I'm in surgery people? even because there's, there's some, uh, some serious cases out there, you know. Hard valves as well, of course. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. But, and, and if I'm not doing that, I'm hanging pictures, uh, cutting grass. Sean, will you go with him, just, please? Yeah. Just make sure even we get a quick I, I go at the sculpture. I'm pretty good at that too. <laughs> <laughs> have you got, oh, you need the key. What, what have you learnt over the last week or so? Oh, well, I've learnt a whole new range of skills. Um, these include flattening grass for the film shoot. I've, I've also rather enjoyed being an extra on the film shoot. I've played two silent extras, but today I finally get to perform in front of the camera. Um, I've, learnt, I've, I've learnt a whole new range of skills, basically, and I've really enjoyed um, helping out in the production. I think my favourite job that I've undertaken has been with the boom mic. And, um, no, I've just, I've just really enjoyed it. Are you all right, David? Yeah. Right, Richard, handheld, up the top, quick as you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quick as you like. Don't rush, Richard. Is <laughs> 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 break time yet? <laughs> See, when you start set out doing this, did you know you were going to get hung from a rock? I did, actually, yeah. Yeah, and foolishly I said, that's okay. Um, we'll see. How about the blood running to your head? I'm not going to make you a bit dizzy. I don't know, I don't know. I might start thinking, <laughs> which could be worrying, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that could be quite dangerous. So tell me, Chris, did you know this was this dangerous when you started off? We thought this might be quite tricky. <laughs> quite tricky. This looks and we're hoping, we're hoping David's sense of humour extends to mortal fear and... Uh, a certain trepidation about the skills of his fellow actors. <laughs> oh, yeah, put me through the toffee, please. I don't care if he isn't a bloody meeting. This is an emergency.
Of course, our baddie has to get his comeuppance, but we wanted to spare his life. So having dangled him over the edge of a cliff, and then dropped him, we next see him like this. Set in the very near future, when the Westminster government is more determined than ever to prevent Scottish independence, this short film explores the relationship between grandfather and grandson as they learn to trust and respect one another. Events play out at various island locations with a combination of comedy and pathos, enticing the audience to explore Aaron's delights for themselves. The cast in no said order are as follows. Geoffrey Botterill as Gilbert, Stuart Goff as Doug, Lewis Stevenson as Andy, James Smith as Fraser, Andy McNamara as Scott, David Simkin as MI5 Clive, Sheila Gilmore as the director of Visit Aaron, Val Waite as the bartender and makeup lady, Charles Curry as the tourism marketing manager, Natasha Nelson as the bully, Isla Blair as the bar manager, Marvin Elliott as himself, Mark Nelson as Andy's father, Percy as Doug's dog, Bertie the pig, Doreen and Louise, crew, director and co-writer Chris Atkins, producer and co-writer Jan Atkins, director of photography Richard Hickman, Lighting and sound, Frank McAllister. Choreographer, Fiona Christie Rodriguez. Graphics, Graham Atkins. And Heather Goff as voice coach. Musical director, Steve Agnew. Production trainee, Sean Monteith. Production trainee, Rory Morrison. Documentary produced by director of photography, Philip Johnston. Sound, Susan Johnston. Voiceover by David Simkin and Chris and Jan Atkins. Extra footage shot by Richard Hickman and Frank McAllister. Anne Curtis, makeup lady. A big thanks to Alan Atkins for looking after the crew at the Belvedere Guest House. And Chris and Jan Atkins for making us so welcome with their generous hospitality.